Hello everyone. When I joined my first job as a hardware design engineer, my boss gave me a freshly assembled PCB and wanted me to do the first power on test cases. The board basically gets a 12 volt input from an external connector and it has multiple local voltage regulators which generates other lower voltages which is required for various other interfaces of the PC. So as a part of this first power on test cases, I am actually supposed to uh, measure the output voltages of the various regulators which is mounted on the PC. The PCB had many onboard voltage regulators for generating many lower voltage levels such as 5 volt, 3.3 volt, 1 volt and etc. When I measured the output voltage of these regulators using a calibrated digital multimeter, what I observed was little different. The output of 5 volt regulator is not actually 5 volt, it was actually around 4.96 volts. And the 3.3 volt regulator was around 3.31 volts. And 1.8 volt regulator output was around 1.85 volts. I was a little amused with the small variations in the output of these regulators and I actually doubted whether the circuit is working well or my digital multimeter is not. So I used a different calibrated multimeter and measured the output voltages of all regulators and still they are same, they are not equal to the actual expected output voltages. Then why do this voltage regulator output is not actually equal to the expected value? In this video, we are going to discuss how to design or calculate the tolerance of the output voltage of a voltage regulator. Welcome to today's video. Before getting into any details, let us understand what is a voltage regulator. A voltage regulator is a system or a circuit that gets an input voltage and generates a regulated output voltage. If the input voltage of the voltage regulator is greater than the output voltage, it can be generally referred as a step down regulator. In case if the output voltage of the voltage regulator is greater than the input voltage, then it can be generally referred as step up voltage regulator. There are many topologies of voltage regulators that we are not going to cover on this video. We are going to stick on the calculation of the output voltage tolerance of a voltage regulator design. Let us say this is a voltage regulator and let us assume there is a block A. This block A consists of some sort of circuits which converts 5 volts into 3.3 volts. A voltage regulator is a closed loop control system which means a part of the output is given as a feedback to the voltage regulator again. Usually a voltage regulator will have a feedback or a just beam for this purpose. So why do we need a feedback circuit? The answer would be simple. The closed loop feedback system will provide a proper regulation of the output voltage by monitoring the output voltage throughout the period of time. Let us see in detail how this feedback system works. The feedback system will have an error amplifier which can be considered as a differential amplifier. A differential amplifier produces an output which is based on the difference between the voltages in the inverting and the non-inverting input terminals. The voltage regulator will have a stable internal voltage reference which is usually 0.8 volts and it is connected to one of the input terminals of the error amplifier. The output voltage of the regulator is connected to the other input terminal of the error amplifier which is usually the feedback or the adjust rate. It is not connected directly but through a voltage divider. This forms the external feedback circuit of the voltage regulator. The value of the resistors in the voltage divider is selected in such a way that when V out is equal to the expected output voltage, say 3.3 volt, then Vf applied to this feedback pin is equal to the internal voltage reference which is in R case 0 0.8 volts. Let us consider the output is properly regulated to 3.3 volts. In that case, the both terminals of the error amplifier will be equal. So there will be no error signal. Let us consider the output voltage is not actually equal to 3.3 volts. It is slightly greater than or less than 3 volts. So what happens? This small change in the output voltage will also reflect back in the feedback pin. The feedback pin will not be exactly 0.8 volt. It will be slightly greater than 0.8 volt or less than 0.8 volt, depending on the output voltage. This change of voltage levels between the inverting and non-inverting terminals of the error amplifier will generate an error signal. This error signal will be used by the block A 
to adjust the output voltage and regulate it back to 3.3. We have seen how a voltage regulator regulates an output voltage. Let us consider an example and calculate the output voltage and its tolerance. We will design a linear voltage regulator to convert 3.3 volt input into 1.5 volt regulated output using a device ISL8011. For this purpose of the video, let us focus only on the output voltage configurations. Based on the reference application schematics from the data sheet, R3 and R4 are the feedback resistors. The data sheet example is designed for a 1 volt regulated output. However, we will recalculate the values for 4.5 volts output. We could find the formula for calculating the feedback resistors of the output voltage settings in the data sheet. We could see for this regulator, the internal reference voltage is 0.5 volts. The data sheet also recommends to keep resistor R4 value between 500 ohms and 1 kilo ohms. It is very good to follow any such recommendations provided by the device data sheet. So let us use an excel sheet for calculating the R3 and R4 values. We can choose to use R4 as 1 kilo ohm resistor. So we need to calculate the value of R3. When R4 is equal to 1 kilo ohm, R3 must be equal to 2 kilo ohms in order to get the desired output, which is 1.5 volt in our case. It is always good to recalculate the VO from the selected resistor values and the V reference voltage. Yes, we get a 1.5 volt. Sometimes the calculated R3 value can be something like 3.72 kilo ohms, which is not a standard value. In that case, we can try to use a nearest value resistor, but it will result in a slightly different output voltage. If that is not acceptable, then you need to try a different combination of R3 and R4 resistors and try to attain a standard value of R3 and R4. The scope of this video is to talk about the tolerance with the output of a voltage regulator. Let us see why the output voltage of my voltage regulator are not exactly as expected. There are small differences. The answer is the components that we used for configuring the output voltages are not ideal. They have their own tolerance. Let us see what are the parameters that affects the output voltage of a voltage regulator. Number 1, R3 and R4 values, which is the feedback resistor. Second, the internal voltage reference of the voltage regulator. All resistors come up with a tolerance level. They are indicated in terms of percentage. Let us assume the chosen resistors are 5% tolerant. Then it means a 1 kilo ohm resistor need not to be 1 kilo ohm exactly. It can be anywhere between 950 ohms and 1050 ohms. So when the value of the resistor actually changes, it contributes to a change in the output voltage of the regulator. We could also see the data sheet's electrical specification to understand that the internal voltage reference is not fixed to 0.5 volts. It may vary from 494 millivolts to 510 millivolts. Based on all these variations, the output voltage will also have a tolerance. Let us rewrite the output voltage formula including the tolerance of the feedback resistors and the internal reference voltage. The basic formula is V out is equal to V reference into R3 by R4 plus R1. The values R3, R4 and V reference will have a tolerance based on which the V out will also have a minimum and a maximum current. Let us try to figure out what is the formula for the maximum V out. This could be tricky sometimes. To calculate the maximum V out, all the numerator components in the RHS formula must be considered to maximum tolerance level and the, all the denominator components must be considered to minimum tolerance level. As vice versa, for calculating the V out minimum, all the numerator components must be considered as minimum tolerance level and the, all the denominator components must be considered to maximum tolerance level. Let us substitute this formula in the Excel sheet and get to know what is the minimum and maximum level of this voltage regulator. We can add both columns for calculating minimum and maximum voltage levels for the internal reference voltage and the feedback resistors. And we will use the derived formula for calculating minimum and maximum output voltage which is expected for this configuration of resistors. 
So our output voltage can be anywhere between 1.3 volts and 1.64 volts. And in terms of percentage, this particular design of a voltage regulator can have a tolerance of minus 7 percent to plus 9 percent from its nominal 1.5 volts. So now you feel that this tolerance is not acceptable for your design, especially when you are using this voltage for critical circuits like media, three or processor or microcontroller interfaces. To minimize the tolerance of the output voltage of the regulator, the area to focus is to look for a feedback resistor which has very less tolerance. However, we cannot modify the tolerance of the internal voltage reference. When using 1% tolerant resistors for R3 and R4, we could see that the output voltage now will be in the range of 1.46 volts and 1.55 volts, which is less or minus 3% variation. Now the tolerance of the output voltage is much less compared to the previous condition. And this is how you can calculate or configure a voltage regulator design for a particular tolerance of required volt. In the previous section, we have seen how the tolerance of the feedback resistor and the internal voltage will contribute to the variation of the output voltage of the regulator. There is one more parameter to look out, it is the ambient temperature of the region. Assume your product or design is going to be mounted on an outdoor application. During the daytime, due to sun, it will get very hot. So the product will have a temperature cycle which goes from high to low throughout the day. The PCB will also get heated because of the components which is being mounted on. The 1 kilo ohm resistance and 1 percentage tolerance is rated for an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius which means at a different temperature range, this resistance may not be equal to 1 kilo ohm. We have to look out for a different parameter called uh, temperature coefficient which is usually denoted in the units of ppm per degree Celsius. Let us assume the selected resistor is 1 kilo ohm, 1% 1 tolerance and plus or minus ppm per degree Celsius. This resistor is 1 kilo ohm at 25 degree Celsius. There are some online calculators available to calculate the variation in resistance of a resistor based on thermal coefficient and the ambient temperature. The center of the temperature coefficient has plus or minus 300 ppm per degree Celsius. The reference temperature is 25 degree Celsius. And we can also consider the temperature range of the product is minus 20 degree Celsius to plus 70 degree Celsius. So based on our conditions, the variation of R typical is between 986.5 ohms to 1013.5 ohms. This is around 1.4 percentage of variation from normal value. This 1.4 percentage of the variation adds up to the component tolerance. The total variation of the resistance will be 1 percentage plus 1.4 percentage which makes up to a total of 2.4 percentage variation. This does not impact much for system with a limited operating range, for example, a commercial product. When it comes to a design of a product with a wide operating temperature range, this is a very important parameter to look into. We have understood that choosing a feedback resistor with a lower tolerance and a lower thermal coefficient will have a better regulated voltage. There are many other design parameters that have to be looked into such as dropout voltage requirement, input and output capacitor selections, ripple voltage requirement, line regulation, load regulation, stability, etc. All these design parameters will also have an impact on the output voltage of the regulator. We will try to cover them in the upcoming videos. Now you might have a question. How much tolerance of PO is allowed for my design? If you would like to know exactly how much tolerance that you can afford for your design, you need to work it out based on what type of your load is. A very simple way to estimate it is to open the data sheet of your load, say a microcontroller or an IC or a memory device etc. Go to recommended operating conditions and you can find the minimum and maximum range of the input voltage which can be accepted by your load. There are some variant of voltage regulators with fixed output voltage which means the output voltage is fixed to a specific value and cannot be modified or configured based on any resistor configurations. Those type of regulators do not have a feedback or adjust pin on the IC. There is nothing different in this type of regulators. The feedback resistors are placed inside the package of the regulator ICs. 
most of the electronic engineers in the hobbies would have already known how to adjust the output voltage of the liquid. I hope this video has given you additional and fine information on how to design a precise voltage regulator which will improve your design skills and take it to near perfection. Hit like button if you like this video. For more videos related to electronic design, please subscribe to EMA Labs. Share this video to your friends, electronic hobbies, engineers and electronic students. We'll catch you up in another video. Thank you for watching. My name is Suresh Suryan.